state. Any conflicts with that? Could I have a motion to accept the agenda as modified? Ursula, and a second. Thank you, McKenna. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Can everybody hear me there? Just remind me of my tone. <laughs> uh, hey. Okay. Welcome to our guests. I'm going to jump public comments just for a minute and move into uh, uh, the celebration of our school board members present with us. Uh, so today uh, is, uh, is uh, the last day in February that we can celebrate the service of all your school board members, but we also have some school board members that are going to be stepping down after March 5th. So we wanted to take the opportunity to celebrate them at a public meeting and thank them for their service to, to this board in many different, many different ways. And I'm not going to single one or the other, but they will know who I'm talking about and then we'll have a little present for them, but it, board members have provided a lot of clarity of thought. I've left it, a lot of themselves in this board through through many years, some through 11 years, some through four years, some through two years, and some from two years. And I'm talking from students to, to, to board members and their contributions to making us think differently, to really care about the students, to, to just believe in their communities are, you know, are, are many. And there's no way for us to properly thank you guys for your, so I'm going to ask for Jonas and Maggie and Kari to come up here and fill us. And we have a little money to be open for their service to our community. I didn't want you to not feel celebrated knowing oh. that you're stepping <laughs> down. You're going to get some more. Oh, appreciate it. It's the first of many. Jonas and yes. Mary have already been done. Thank you. And we really appreciate it. I'll be telling you that you're too far <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Can I just take a minute? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. any of you, please take yeah. a minute. Just bear with me for a second. Yes. I, I'm just so full of appreciation. I want to thank a few people. I want to thank everybody. I just, this has been such a meaningful experience for me. Um, and so students and families and the broader community and the staff. And there's a few specific people I want to thank. One is Stephen, whose um, tenure yeah. overlap was really well. I started just before Stephen. <laughs> So just long enough to see some of the change that has happened um, under your steady leadership. Another person is Jen, who um, uh, really helped make the education quality work meaningful, in addition to everything else, but also your selfless contribution of stepping up and being the interim superintendent in our time of need. I don't want that to ever be forgotten. And you know, if we ever get around to doing a uh, Washington Central Mount Rushmore, I will vote to have you on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I want to, I, I, um, board members, I just want to say it's not easy. What's required to do this and, and do it well goes way beyond what probably any, anybody signed up for. Um, and, and like the decisions just get harder, it seems like. And, um, but the fact that we are a team and like everybody, I mean, just all over the years, I felt like this spirit of we're pulling together that makes all the difference and there are two people I want to thank specifically one is Floor who I don't know how you do it with your just boundless time and energy you were joking last week about um, cloning and either you figured that out or you're <laughs> making some serious sacrifices to sleep and everything else so thank you Floor and the other person is Adrian Megida who was on the U32 board for I think 20 years and she was the chair for six years and just, she was a first grade teacher in a neighboring district. No, nothing remembers. And then she would come and lead the board and she was just like so wise and steady. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to mention her is because probably a lot of people don't know her. And um, she's on our strategic planning steering committee, but she's been off the board for many years. And so why would you know her? But the point is that what we do is, is collective 
and it's cumulative. And so I just encourage you to think about how are we setting up the next students and teachers and, uh, and, um, and boards for success. So. And the last thing I wanted to uh, thank um, my family and especially my wife, Gabrielle, because sacrifices have been made. And um, I think it's important to acknowledge that. And for me, um, just uh, thinking what a privilege this has been to, to do this. It's really meant a lot. So thank you. Feel free to speak if you guys want to say anything or we'll, no, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, I would also call out Scott Thompson. Being a chair is incredibly difficult. It was an incredibly difficult job that Scott had. Um, I want to call out Steve Look uh, as well. He provided me a lot of clarity um, with his experience. Um, and Diane. <laughs> So now public comments. Anybody in the screen? I don't see any hands raised. Anybody? John. Support the school budget. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so now we're going to move into our reports, student reports. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is Black History Month, as everyone knows. And our BLAM group has been getting special guests to come in every week, I believe, um, to talk about their experiences and also do other things. So we had a special guest um, that came in and they did some music stuff. And they were really good. I signed up for that callback and I went... And the older man was, like, shredding his guitar. So I really enjoyed it. But I've only heard positive feedback. <coughs> so way to go, Blam, for setting that up. Okay. Um, so we got um, playoffs coming up. Today, um, the boys' ice hockey team played Burlington, and the boys' basketball team is playing North Country. Um, that's their quarterfinal game. Uh, the varsity girls play at Randolph, and that's their quarterfinal game. I think that's tomorrow. Um, and then varsity boys and girls have quarterfinals next Wednesday, which is super exciting. And then Nordic is competing at St. J today. It's great. Um, we had our sweethearts dance for all high school, and Greta Little and I DJed that. And it was really fun. It's really fun to be not a freshman anymore. <laughs> there was, it was a really young group. And it's, it's funny to look back and be like, yeah, it, like, you do care a lot about dancing in front of people. But Greta and I just grabbed a whole bunch of kids and pulled them in. And we all danced together. And it was really good. It was really sweet to see. And... It was really fun. I think it was good. Um, February break is coming up. Um, Friday after school, it's starting. And um, everybody's pretty ready, which is great. Break time. It's going to be great. Um, so, Stephen, our principal, this is what it says. <laughs> the <laughs> Nepal trip is tomorrow. Friday. <laughs> Oops, the fifth. That was my bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Stephen is leaving us 
to go to Nepal. <laughs> but he'll be back. <laughs> Not just even. It's going to be fun. I need to go. <laughs> Which is cool. <laughs> but Stephen has to leave us. <laughs> um, and then kind of like a PSA, our entire school is really sick. So like just keep washing your hands. Um, everyone's been really sneezy. Yeah, sorry for it. <laughs> I'm over it at this point. That's, that's me also. So yeah. I'm but everyone's really ready for this break because it's been busy, but also we're at that weird point where we, at least for seniors, we're still trying to get through the year, but we're going into break and then come back to school for a little bit and then go into another break. So I think everyone's just trying to get their work done, stay healthy, and get to graduation right now. Oh, that was perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, so that's the student report. <laughs> and she doesn't have her cell phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to move to the superintendent, to the cult report that we're going to. And um, do you want to yep. highlight? So I'll highlight two things. One, um, there is a PCB update, and it is brief, but there's a pretty big positive, uh, which is um, we were unsure exactly how much of this initial cost phase would be funded, and we were frankly concerned that it wouldn't be much of it, and the entire cost of Stone Environmental for their current work, again, this is not the long-term fix, but it is pretty significant, so that will be covered, and that's exciting. So they're in, they're doing their work, there's a picture of one of the filters. Um, and then I thought that Kara maybe could just give a little bit of an update around the Ability Challenge, because that's exciting. Sure. Um, so earlier <coughs> this year, we shared about the Ability Challenge coming a nonprofit um, from the D.C. area to help us understand how we're showing up for kids with disabilities um, and what our inclusive practices are like in the district. And so um, Sarah and Kristen did an assessment over about four months administrators, teachers, and there were surveys completed, and they did a document review, so they did a really um, broad look at our system, which was exciting, and reflected back to us their objective perspective of our special education delivery system. Um, and then in January, they joined our leadership team meeting to talk through their findings, which largely affirmed kind of the direction that we were thought we were headed in and what we're doing well in our areas for development. Um, some of the pieces of it that I'll share with you that are really exciting is we have a really strong belief set around um, students being in the classroom. And so our inclusive practices, we believe in inclusive practices and we want that for our students. Um, and what we're working on is really identifying what is going well in each of our buildings and magnifying that to keep it consistent across the district. Uh, so there's a lot more details in the report that Any questions from board members? Yeah. I was just super excited to read it and really wanted to yeah. know more about it. And yeah, I'll so. add one thing that I can get really excited, so I'm trying to keep myself short. Um, <laughs> can, we're, so that the ability challenge um, concluded, and we're also conducting analysis of the system. So the ability challenge will point us to sort of where are we headed, and then also we're looking at the resources that we have in our special department and how we can take those through to really meet our goals and our mission related to inclusion for all students. Um, and so I'm hoping towards the end of the year I'll present to you about how those are coming together um, and the shifts that we'll see in our MLSS. And we'll just continue to develop those systems. Great. Thank you, Kara. Any other questions from the cult report or to Kara? No? Again, thank you for the cult report for all principals here and not here in the central office. <laughs> yeah. So now we have the Central Vermont Career Center. I'll be super brief. Everybody's receiving their, you know, some of you are receiving ballots or have asked for the ballots. Mm -hmm. And then most of you have to get your ballot uh, when you go vote. So don't forget to vote for the Central Vermont Career Center too. 
And the second is that we have signed a contract with the Trix and Collins for the re <coughs> to make sure that we make the career center, take the career center to the next uh, um, envisioning is what we're calling it right now so that we can meet student needs that are able to serve the students by 2029, if <coughs> all of our students. Uh, then principal's report. Would I invite you to ask questions. Questions from the board, it's page 15. Any of the any highlights? No. Okay. I don't see anybody just jumping at no. appreciation. appreciation. Yeah. Okay. But it's really great to get a little look into your schools by you know, the principal's report. Uh, the VSBA uh, report, there are just two things. Uh, you, you all got the alert this afternoon, but in case you haven't had a chance to read it, it's, uh, 8.50 passed and is headed towards the governor's office and he has five days to act on it. Uh, and then um, and then other than that, there's there's a lot of webinars going on uh, right now. Our own Ursula is going to be participating in the next one. We're trying to share love and she's going to uh, be sharing uh, our, how do we onboard new board members. And it's exciting and thankful to Ursula to be willing to Step up. Thank you. Uh, so sign up if you want to learn more. Um, okay, so now let's move into the big subject of today, uh, Board, Board Operations Act 127 uh, discussion. So I'm just going to move down here and try to frame it a little bit. You got a, a memo from the finance, from, from the finance committee that was pretty you know, pretty clear, we gave some pros and cons in this, but I thought might be the most helpful today, instead of spending a lot of time about talking about what a 27 is, you know, like the whole H850, we're not gonna spend time talking about that, but we could put a motion on the table that sort of relates to that table that we have, so a motion to, could be a motion to maintain our proposed budget, or a motion to cancel and revise our proposed budget. Would somebody be willing to make, it doesn't mean, you know, and then we will discuss, but then we would have a motion on the table. It, okay. I move to maintain our proposed budget. Okay. Second by Ursula. Did you get that, Lisa? Yes. All right. So, so then let's open it to come for conversation. <coughs> I think these pro, you know, the chart is very helpful, and I think the pros really list, um, you know, that fact of, of and, and appreciating the work, Suzanne, that you've done about really making it clear and looking that the impact is really not that different with the 5% cap gone. There's not a huge difference, and then the confusion that would come about if we cancel, try to shift, and I just think is not, is disrespectful. And we could just popcorn around, or I really want everybody to have <coughs> a to, today, so please, uh, Joshua, I know that you have a limited time today. I don't want to put you in the spot, but if you wanted to go next, uh, or if you want to wait, that's okay, too. Oh, I can't hear you. Wait, Mark, hold on a minute. We can hear you. But it's not, I, I see that you're unmuted, so I think it's up here. Could you try now, please, Joshua? Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You can hear me? Yes. Go for it. Great. So the motion, just so uh, it was a little hard to hear, just so I understand, the motion is to maintain our current budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Motion to maintain uh, yeah. our proposed budget. Yeah. Right. And so I think we should revisit the budget. Um, I've heard a lot from the community, uh, a lot of people that have supported the board's decisions throughout the years, um, and they are really nervous about the work we're doing here and our lack of, what they feel is the lack of attention to our budgetary problems. Um, I've heard things like, you know, the school is not, should not be 
responsible for everything, meaning, you know, people's mental health, people's nursing concerns, people's dietary things, and whether or not I agree with that, I think it's worth paying attention to that. Uh, I do, however, understand that um, <clears throat> the idea of maintaining it if we're not going to listen to leadership recommendations after the fact <coughs> anyway. So um, I, I believe I, I would not be supporting maintaining this budget. Um, I just I think it's not good board behavior, the, the road we're going down. Thank you, Joshua. Okay. I'm just trying to please. Uh, Natasha's. <laughs> oh, Natasha, go ahead. I can't see her raising her hand. But... I'll pass. Oh, you'll pass. Okay. Um, <coughs> I don't like jump all over. <laughs> uh, do you want to go, Michael? Sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say, though. I mean, I am in favor of moving forward with our proposed budget. Um, I think that the amount we would have to cut from the budget to make a meaningful financial impact on voters is enormous. I don't think we would get anywhere near that, and it would be a lot of work when there's already been a lot of work and thought put into this. I, I want to keep, you know, in mind for the long game, of course, um, as we have been, how to make wise financial decisions, but I, I don't see, you know, rushing back to this budget to revise it um, is really going to have a meaningful impact on, you know, the the finances of our constituents. Um, so that, those are my thoughts. <laughs> Not very eloquent. Daniel, would you? Um, sure, yeah. Well, I, I came into the finance committee meeting last week, um, like, prepared to recommend with the rest of the committee that, that we ask the board to make reductions. And I was, I came out of that meeting um, with the position that we should maintain it for now. I think it's, it is, a lot of it has to do with the confusion, not just the procedural confusion, but also um, one of the points on this reasons to maintain our proposed budget is that if we cut some, then put it before the voters, and the budget is voted down, it's not a clear message one way or the other. And it, it, our work becomes incredibly problematic because of that. I think it's, it's, I think leaving it up to the voters to give an unequivocal message one way or the other, which they're gonna be able to do as the budget stands now, is the right <coughs> choice. And we can take action if we need to take action if the, if the budget were to fail, but, um, I think for a lot of us, our priorities and the trade-offs that, that we, we understood are being made, you know, are in this budget as it stands. And it's, it's an incredibly stressful position that we're all in, but I think leaving it to the voters on, on March 5th makes the most sense for now. Thank you, Daniel. I'm very on the fence about pass. I don't want to be calling on people, but I don't know. How do you want to go in I with go. your clear um, thoughts? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, obviously this is a no good options here, but um, I'm in favor of reducing the budget. I think that um, for all the reasons that are in the table, I'm compelled by the, the, the other reasons, but I think... Um, one to add is that I think that we should do everything um, feasible to avoid a budget vote going down. Because once that happens a first time, I fear that it, it, it changes the culture around voting for the school budget. I see that in other districts. And um, 
I think it's um, it's hard to be very specific, but, but to try to be specific, I would say accept the original proposals that reduce the nursing and counseling position, and then identify <coughs> at least another 500,000 to remove. And I, I recognize that that's not a very significant impact on, a, on the tax rate, um, but I think that it demonstrates a, de would just demonstrate a degree of fiscal responsibility that uh, our, our community is looking for from us. And then I, th I think that we would have to, in, in order to do that, we would have to essentially um, empower the administration to identify how, how, it could, how those reductions could be made with the least impact um, possible and then, and, and then basically plan on accepting those recommendations. I don't think that we can get into a back and forth and have, um, have you know, staff on the fence about whether we're going to recommend that or not. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Terry. Where's this? Here you go. Um, I have been pretty conflicted on this, especially after the last finance meeting when we came up with this table. Um, I very much wanted to revise our proposed budget. I And I had to decide if that was where I stood previously and those feelings playing a part into it. We very much have a fiscal responsibility to our communities and we need to take steps. I am very concerned about the timeline in getting it done. And that's not an answer. I'm, I, Jonathan? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm. I'm in favor of keeping the budget as it is for many of the reasons that Daniel mentioned, but also because um, I think that there are other factors that play into this, um, including you know the state of Vermont has underfunded public education for decades, and I think that's something that has to be um, said, and also. Uh, and I realize that that's not a solution right now, but I think that's part of the problem is that educational spending is so heavily weighted onto localities for a variety of reasons. But when we get into a, a situation we're facing now, um, it, it's, really, it's, it's really a way of, I think, the state shifting the burden to local people that I find really unacceptable. Um, so, and I realize, it, I realize it's a gamble in a, in a sense, the fact that this, you know, some of these rates and these increases are really quite significant and certainly that will have a direct impact on many people. Um, but I think there are, I think there are ways to address this going forward that include, like I said, um, the legislature really looking at ways that, that funding, that school funding is done in Vermont um, because I think part of that lies in the legislature. Part of the responsibility for the position we're in lies with decisions that have been made for a long, long time with respect to education funding in Vermont. So um, as hard as it is, I think um, tr trying to and again, let's remember just one more quick thing, that part of what we're doing right now is in direct reaction to legislation that was passed concerning that 5% cap. So now everybody's having to scramble at the very last minute to try to fix a situation that we didn't create. We've always been responsible, as far as I can tell, fiscally quite responsible with our budgets. How do I know that? Because they passed. I go with the will of the voters. If they're passing, then they're happy with what we're doing. So I guess that's all I'll say. Thank you, Jonathan. Am I? I think that if we don't try to reduce the budget, <coughs> it would be a disservice to the voters, to the community. 
I think that uh, we shouldn't underestimate the effort that's been put in to create school-wide, community-oriented, social-emotional learning programs. Um, and I think that it's been clearly and skillfully articulated to show that students' mental health and well-being is benefiting from these school-wide community approaches. And so it's actually reducing the burden of one or a few counselors to do the heavy lifting um, of supporting people in that way. And so um, while I think that it, it shouldn't be even a consideration that anyone has to make to cut the positions of nurses and counselors during a one of the worst mental health crises of our lives um, for generations, um, but it has pushed the community to be creative and innovative and to find ways to act collectively and communally, which I think is inspiring. And I think that that's what's been needed for a very long time. Um, and I think that we can also have the conversation of the need for more support financially to not put it uh, put the burden on um, the taxpayers and the voters and the community at large. I think that if families have the additional burden financially um, that would happen if we don't try to lower the budget, that could have negative implications on mental health and well-being across the community as well, which is just as significant, if not more, to consider in, in this. And so while still I think it's antithetical uh, symbolically to cut these positions to our values collectively. I think that looking at the data and um, the models that have been implemented and continue to evolve and improve, I think that we can do both. We can reduce the budget and we can meet the needs. I'm not, oh, my can go ahead. Or, Beth, are you ready? I, I'm ready, yeah. No, you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. yeah, and then we'll go. Through. I mean, I, I was definitely considering similar things to what Daniel said about the just getting a you know, getting a clear message if you know if the budget does fail about which direction we need to go. Um, I, th I mean, I think obviously our priority needs to be to pass the budget on the first time. I really don't know. I guess I'm skeptical that sort of you know, small, you know, you know, small cuts are going to have that that big an impact you know, on that. Um, I think I think we will have you know if we do cut nursing and counseling, I think we will have people voting against the budget on the basis of that. I don't know how many, but I'm but I I wager a guess it's I've been told it's more than zero. Um, <laughs> you know, and. Um, and yeah, I think that I think there absolutely are people who are going to vote against the budget on the basis of this increase being so large. But I think I think they're going to vote against the budget because the increase is so large. I don't think it's I don't think twenty four versus twenty five percent or fifteen versus sixteen percent is that difference. Um, so I think that's what I'm leaning towards leaving the budget as is. I just wanted to make sure I understood this table correctly um, because, the, you know, there's talk about cutting a couple hundred thousand dollars and it looks to me like that would equate to about, a, you know, 300000 might be a $50 reduction in taxes, give or take, mm -hmm. but the, on a $300,000 home. Um, so, again, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be like, oh, it's a little more money, but, like, it's not... I just don't, I will reiterate, I don't think that in a short amount of time we can make meaningful, thoughtful, creative cuts to the budget to, um, that would have any sort of meaningful financial impact one way or the other. And if we chose to do that now, when would, when would the decision need to be made so that we can do the new vote? You know what I'm saying? You'd have to rewarm by March 14th to vote on the last possible day of eight, April 8, 8.50, which is April 15th. Three weeks. 
So if there's no more interest from, from board members, I'm going to open it to the public, and then we would make a decision. Does that make sense to you guys? Uh, any comments from the public from the meeting today, whether it's in person or in uh, anybody, please feel free to comment. I don't see a lot of hands up here, unless I'm missing something. No. Anybody in the pub from the public that want to comment? Trying to do my teaching, what you guys have been teaching me about being a teacher and not waiting, pausing, but. Is there possibly confusion over the fact that public comment isn't in this section? We added yeah, it. We, we changed it. it. Oh, okay. We, we, added, oh, we added it at the beginning oh. of the meeting. And we, missed we all voted on it, I thought. <laughs> okay. Okay, hearing none, we just wanted to make sure that the public got to say yeah. something mm -hmm. while we were having this, uh, this conversation. So if there's nobody that wants to speak. It would right. be helpful to have a <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, a few things. Can you wait, just you introduce yourself? I know you, we all know you're here, but for the okay. public. Um, I hear what you're all saying. I agree with Kari, but I also agree with we can't change the process now. You're going to do nothing but confuse the voters. Right? Yes, I feel like Kari's right. We should. Look at the budget, but I think we're too late for that. So that's what I, I think. I think you're going to confuse the voters if you change things right now. People are, we all got our ballots already. Mm -hmm. There are people are probably already filling it out and voting, and then to say, oh no, we're not going to do it. That's that doesn't seem right. So I think right now you have to just leave it up to the voters. But if they should turn it, if they vote it down, okay. then that's the message. Again to come up with possibilities. Mm -hmm. okay. There's one hand. Oh, Shannon. Hand. Shannon, go ahead. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Shannon Miller. I'm a parent um, of three, one at Berlin Elementary and two at U32. Um, our question when thinking about this budget, um, this is clearly an extraordinary situation and year, um, but it seems like things will not um, get more affordable from here on out um, in terms of taxes. So I heard one of the board members say, um, you know, we will plan for this essentially um, big decisions in the future. Um, and I would love to hear a little bit more about what those ideas are. Um, I agree it's really short timing at this point. Um, so what's the plan moving forward to keep things affordable um, for families who live in this district? Thanks. Thank you, Shannon. And I, I, I think later on in our in our meeting, because we haven't discussed with the board, uh, the board, so that you know, the board does have a configuration committee, <coughs> and we've been doing a lot of work with the finance config slash configuration committee in planning for the future. What what opportunities do we have as a district to look at the district as a whole, and see what are the needs. You know, how many teachers do we need? How many schools do we need? Like, those are the kind of conversations that we've been having as a, as a committee that we're hoping to share with the public once we share with the board in early April will be our, our hope. But just start early conversations, not so that it won't affect this year's budget, right? It would affect a future budget, whether it's 26 or 27, we're still to, to have those conversations, right? I don't see any other hands up, but, but we do have a lot of opportunities for our district. So I guess we can have a vote. I don't want to thoroughly drag the conversation. I do have an opinion, obviously. Yeah, I, I like, so I, I'm, I'm like really torn because I really, I, I, I really we, we need to look at the opportunities together and, and we need to really cut. I, I think it is. We sh in my mind, we did not need to add our, you know, like I think we need to do a better job about uh, do, doing data informed decisions uh, for, you know, for the future to make sure that our budget represents what is best for kids. I, I think at the 11th hour right now, making a, a change, I agree that we don't have a lot of time, especially, I don't know that there's the will of the board as a whole 
to not try to micromanage where those cuts are, right? And I mean that with all due respect. I don't mean that they're respecting anybody. I just feel like at the point that we are right now, we want to make a systematic change. And the systematic change is going to come from all that data that we're going to get and all the work that the Configuration Committee has been doing. I think that we could agree potentially today to not change our budget, but then talk about where are those reductions. If the budget fails right now, we're not going to have much time to do a system approach either, but we would have a little more time to react to it in a in a better way than try to rush it right now. And and we you know we were receiving calls from from different people already, and 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 there is there is confusion. It is not as confusing because we can't we we have given us the power to you just say you don't count that article. The tabulator can count. You don't count that article, and then you put it to vote already. But I think if the budget was voted uh, no, the, the board would have clear information that mm -hmm. we need to do something. You know, like there is just not, I, I don't want to have failed votes. So I, I'm really torn. You know, I'm, I'm really torn. If I, if I had to speak, I'm like, we have to cut, right? Does it make sense right now where we are? It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty late in understanding all of us as we work as a group, and it requires all of us. I don't want to make this decision with one vote that is ahead, right? It will require the board acting as a group because it's not one of us that's able to make this change. So, and you know, and just looking at the numbers right now, it's just it, we. I don't want to also disrespect our leadership team and not and send them spinning to come back at our next meeting with some savings, and then we all like, yeah, no, that we're not ready for that either. So, we. That's that's where that's where I, that's, that's where I am right now. But that doesn't mean that's how we have. You know, it's it's a decision. You know, the power is from all of us working together towards where we want to go, and that's what we have to continue to do. As a, as as, as <coughs> we're incredibly lucky, we have so much in this district, and we just need to be more. We we have to take advantage of the scale to best serve our kids, but. It, so, so are I'm you here. saying that if the budget fails, it's likely that we will discuss as a board if we take the administration's recommendation, the initial recommendation, and then <coughs> forward further cuts could be made? To yeah. 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 Further. yeah, we would have to. Yeah, yeah. there's no option. Mm -hmm. uh, did everybody agree? There would be no option. You know, we have to look at cuts. Right. right. Yeah, I'm looking at everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think especially as if we put the budget forward, as is, mm -hmm. then yes, I think mm -hmm. it's very clear that it's it was because it was too expensive. Mm -hmm. If we, you know, there was a situation in Barry last year where there was an active, there was a group of people who, who never voted for the budget because they think it's too expensive, and there was an active campaign of people to, to vote it down because they thought they'd spend enough. Mm -hmm. And that's the situation that's really tough for a board. But I think you know with, where we are right now, it, I think it's pretty clear, clear that it's that would need to be cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's an extraordinary year, right, Kari? Yeah, I don't disagree with anything people are saying, but I do want to point out if um, if the budget fails and you're going to be considering more than yes. 200000 more than 500000 you're going to be considering large numbers, you're still going to be faced with the dilemma of, is that too much? Is, are we, where do we cross the line where we, we start voting against us? And I don't know what you do about that. But um, uh, I, I do. I, w I guess I would recommend let's talk to as many people and gather as much information between now and the vote, and after the vote. But you know, this is an opportunity to hear from people anecdotally. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend like a survey. I don't know how, how you would do that. But a vote is a survey. But but what we don't know is like what are people's thoughts behind their vote. Yeah. I, I agree with all of that, and that also for us to have a commitment, and we keep saying this year after year, a commitment that this is an extraordinary year, right? Because it just, with the, what, what's happening statewide, right, that we mm -hmm. had, that we had no control on, and, but knowing that we are working diligent in our core beliefs and in our, you know, the configuration study, that action must come, right? Like we don't have an option. <laughs> but, so, do you, uh, we could call the vote, or oh, Daniel. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm ready for the vote too, but I guess I'm just a little concerned that we're not, this feels like a very wishy-washy conversation, I guess, and I worry about a vote coming after that, and I, I'm thinking about the message to the community. Um, for me, 
and I'll speak for me right now, but then I'll be prepared to speak with the board, you know, what the board's will is. For me, you know, I, I would understand why someone might vote against it. I think a lot of us would. I don't necessarily agree with that, but I would understand it. And I think it's really clear in our messaging around this, this budget proposal that, you know, we also are talking about our serious discussions, you know, to Shannon's question. We're talking about, you know, really serious proposals on the table about reconf excuse me, reconfiguration and structural change changes to the district. We're not sitting on our hands mm -hmm. through this process, and I think that's important to, to get out there in this whole, this whole debate. Yeah, and I, I would like to piggyback on that, Daniel, that, you know, um, we all have very strong passions and beliefs that have brought us to the table. I'm not being fiscally irresponsible. I'm not being uncaring about what is being faced with our families. I'm at one of the top ends of this increase, um, and it's challenging. And so um, I absolutely understand and hear and exactly what you're saying, Daniel, but I also know that as we bring that thoughtful process into it, we are not um, – we aren't jumping on, let's load up the, the budget, let's load up the budget. We're, we're considering those things. And I think all of us know, once we hear the will of the people, then that's what brings a different conversation to it. And I don't hear any of us who are saying maintain it are also saying and will ignore the will of the voters and not, you know, do the hard work, too. So yeah. I just thank you, Daniel, for bringing thank you. that up. Any last words before we call the vote? I guess okay. I would just say that um, I prefer to approach this work with an optimistic, hopeful <laughs> outlook and not for fear of what might happen. For fear of the unknown. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think that's what we're doing, right? That's the way we're taking a vote. And if you looked at the table, we were taking the table from a position of of control, but also a position of hope, right? Not just like, you know, I, I think when I, when I say that we make a commitment, it's like it takes all of us, we're making a commitment, we're doing the necessary work that we need to do in order to get there, right? So we are still gonna work as board members right now to pass the budget, right? This is the budget that we came to a conclusion after months of deliberation, after looking at our, where student needs were, and this is where we are, right? So we're. So all those in favor of the motion on the table to not change our budget at this moment, please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Nay. If, I think we lost some people. I think we lost Joshua. Oh, we lost Natasha Joshua. was it? Was yeah. Okay. Natasha said. Okay. So the ayes have it. So the motion carries. So the next, uh, the next piece. So we will communicate, right? Like we will communicate. We'll. Okay, you're gonna help me with a little piece before you go. No, just, <laughs> no we'll <laughs> talk about it. But we'll I'm here to help, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's just play contingency a little bit. Yeah. If it fails, there, there. When's the next meeting? It'll be. So that your next week later. meeting. In the work plan is March 13th, March which 13th. is a week later. Last year, you, um, as a contingency plan of sorts, you were going to, or you had a plan, if it had failed, to call an emergency meeting to reorganize yourselves and so the finance committee could get to it faster. Because the finance committee would normally meet on the 12th. You, you won't meet because you're not reorganized yet. So I would imagine you'd want to do something similar if it fails to call an emergency meeting that week to reorganize. What's the rule around that? How, is it 24 hours or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, emergency meeting can be. Emergency, emergency meeting can be emergency instant. meeting. Special so meeting is 24. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. So the emergency meeting can be on the same on the same day. So we could have the, you know, we could have the vote. What, what we are allowing is also respecting of select uh, all of uh, our clerks. clerks. Mm -hmm. Because the commingling of the votes, which is the only reason we're giving more time now. So could very well be that in three days we have all the results, but it, we're trying to give them 10 days so because they're commingling the 
career centers are commingling mm -hmm. our district, but we could potentially have the results before and if the, the results of also the new board member, not new, but whoever wasn't. So then we can reorganize quickly and we can have a finance committee meeting bef uh, be before that. So, so I just want to ask another clarifying question. It's kind of a follow-up to the last question that I had. So I wasn't, I was curious about like, what would we do? Would we reduce the budget? Yeah, we do that. But what, is, there, is it recommended that we then kind of default to the initial um, recommendation of the administration? Would, you, would we like, you would, in the spirit of being efficient, more. is that like? I think you as a board would need to give the administration a financial direction to go in. Yeah. Because once a budget fails, I mean, your financial direction could be $182,000, and then that would be pretty obvious what you meant by that. <laughs> but if, you're, if your recommendation is another number, administration yeah. really needs to be the one circling up around what does that mean, yeah. because it's a different conversation. <coughs> so I would, uh, I would offer that it might be premature to even know where you would go. Yeah. You I would need to come back together, together and say, budget failed. It would be I would like you to take X out. And then one of the things we have talked about is is actually to avoid the go show us what this would look like mm -hmm. versus yeah. definitively we need you to bring this in because there's an incredible amount of stress on the system when yeah. it's just an exercise. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would just yeah. give them a direction. Yeah. They will come back and say, this is how we can meet the student needs. Commit this to it. When we would just commit yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. And then, because we have to warn it, we have less restrictions, but we still have to warn it and plan for a special mm -hmm. election, right? Mm -hmm. A special vote. Okay. So. Thanks for that question. Okay. Uh, then the next uh, point on this was the uh, 4.2 is the process for board self-evaluation. And we had last 60 minutes for the Act 127 conversation because we thought it would take it, it, would, it would take a lot longer. What we want to do with the so I what we had decided was to do the self evaluation is something that is going to get into your mailbox, and we want all of the board members to fill it, and then we'll use that at our retreat. And the desire is that all board members right now that are still with us. We'll, we will use that information to inform how we work in the future as a, as a team, but to get in the practice of, so this would be the first year that we were doing a self, a full self evaluation. We talked about it last year, we did an informal one, and this year would be, it's just like a Google form. And you would, and the idea is to have 100% participation on that, and then to, you know, we all learn from, from it. So, it was just a, informational. I don't think we need a motion or anything for that. It's just that's what we would be doing. Uh, and it's what we had in our work plan, so we're trying to respect all mm -hmm. of, you know, not just respect, but abide for all this planning that we've been doing. Uh, okay, so now we can move to our finance committee discussion, and I'm looking for a motion. It's on page 29 for the U32 baseball refurbish project. Would authorize the allocation of seventy three thousand nine hundred twenty one additional capital reserve funds to the budget for the completion of the U thirty two baseball field refurbishment project and approve awarding U thirty two baseball field refurbishment project contract to Dirt Tech Company LLC in an amount not to exceed two hundred and one thousand one hundred and seventy dollars. Thank you, Ursula. Could I have a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? <coughs> I apologize. So this is this is in addition to the. Is it a different field or it's addition? In it's a, the baseball the field. Baseball. Yeah. Uh, the the bids that came in both came in higher, higher. than our current budget that's in the capital reserve okay. budget. So we're asking for you to authorize seventy three thousand additional. Okay. And then approve awarding the budget. Okay. Awarding the budget. Thank you. Got confused, sorry. Any other questions? Seeing I, I what think happens you if have we a say question. No, then the, <laughs> then the whole baseball thing goes down. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> we, we have already, you know, bidded, but yeah, the whole thing goes down and we will be behind in our capital planning and then we wouldn't be, you know. And like, these funds are in the capital. These funds are in the capital preserve, plan and they've been allocated and we've been planning so that we... completely separate from all the budgets completely that we've separate been talking from, about. Yeah, and they can come back to the general fund in case we're having creative yeah. ideas. My mind blows. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, uh, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, that now is the 5.2 is the word of bid for the district combined capital projects. It's on page 30. Ursula, do you mind? Okay. I got it. Okay. I move that the board approve awarding the WCUUSD 2024 combined construction project contract to EF Wall and Associates. Inc. in an amount not to exceed $591,147. Thank you, Ursula. Second. Thank you, Zach. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. And now 5.3. Okay. Review and approve our project manager contract is on page 31, and that Bill, can you do that for some? Yeah. I move that the board authorize the superintendent <coughs> to sign the contract with WF Project Inspection for his, ins for his services as owner project manager and clerk of the works through February 9th, 2025, not to exceed $87,500. Thank you, Ursula. Second. Thank you, Daniel. Any discussion or questions? You can ask I'm, a question. I'm just curious what the clerk of the works is exactly. So the, the, clerk, the, 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 clerk of, the clerk of the works is a very important person because they make sure that the work gets done on time. They inspect the work. They also are the first contact. So he works with Chris O'Brien and works with Suzanne too. And it's, you know, I, I, you can't even begin to understand what how much Bill has done for us. Keeps track of the project being on being on time. He has liability with his work. He supervises uh, the work and most, they don't do it now, but most of the time if you were borrowing any money, you would need a clerk of the works in order to be, uh, you know, uh, approved to do, the, to do the work and even to give the payment. So he inspects, clears that, and then we can issue a check only if Bill says well, one thing to say about it is that um, in any construction project, there's usually three key parties. There's the contractor, there's the architect or the engineer maybe in this case, and then there's the owner. And if the owner doesn't have someone very knowledgeable and, and has authority in, in the oversight, um, then they're at a disadvantage. You, you really need kind of a level playing field between those three parties. And he, is, he works for us, so he is that person. He makes sure that our interests right. are served. So all, all of the pre-qualifications, all of the, you know, so he's the mediator between everybody. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Did I miss anything, <laughs> Suzanne? On um, page 32 is the list of projects, projects that we're working on right now, and it's really long. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, and I, I think that we've mentioned this before, and you've probably heard in the news, that the AOE initiated a school facility uh, review and all of our schools were reviewing that and we got back reports and you know when we saw it it was like oh well that's on next year's book that that's on next year's list that's on the year after like we have planned out already the things that they are reporting our school facilities need which is so exciting <laughs> and so he expands the capacity for us to be able to get those done uh sooner without him we would definitely have to to push projects out further, mm -hmm. we just wouldn't have the capacity to do it. Yeah. Or we would be having to work with a different clerk of the works every year. And he has worked with us since we did the East Montpelier renovation and it's invaluable. That he's willing to dedicate this amount of time to us too. Mm -hmm. You know, because he could be doing it anywhere. Yeah, so. it, it's notable that he's backed down on his hours on this mm -hmm. contract. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because he intentionally wants to. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things, one of the projects that we're in the middle of is the security card mm -hmm. camera system project. And he and uh, Chris are working extremely hard on that project mm -hmm. with a lot of internal uh, man hours spent on it, analyzing our facilities and what our door doors need and, and what the, the 
you know, locations of cameras, and so it's, I find it very exciting. Sorry, I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it's very exciting. These are such Things large, so these are such large projects that yeah. even, even a modest amount of benefit on a bunch of projects, the return on investment is incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. well worth it. And it also allows the people in the building to stay instructional leaders, you know, allows their superintendent and allows Suzanne to do her job. Otherwise, they would be trying to figure out, oh, is this that? Yeah. So, all those in favor? I appreciate the very thorough answer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm I serious. Love no, I'm serious. Thank field, you. So I like, yeah, and I Thank love you. So. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. And thank you, Bill. And um, now we're going to move into personnel. Configuration. Oh, sorry, sorry. Confi I am a, a yeah, configuration report. I made it too little in my thing. So it, I don't even know where to start. So I have four. I put four bullet points, but please, you guys, correct me. Uh, so we were, uh, when we started to talk about the, today, about the configuration study, one thing that uh, uh, three members of our leadership can emphasize is that there's a, it, it, one, it was high quality enrichment and instructional for all students. It's you know, sort of like the overarching concept of, of the configuration that different models that they showed us. Uh, we want to recommend the biggest part is that the configuration finance committee wants to recommend to the board that we discuss this at our uh, uh, April 3rd meeting and that would be a presentation to the board. Usually our first meeting of the month is a community meeting too, so it would be open to community, but that would also be the first time that the board is listening to it and that would allow the, our leadership team to do a little bit more work in transportation and other, and other things. I was not gonna get into the different models that they presented to us, but I think one thing that we were really excited about is the, the different opportunities that there are, whether it is putting together, bringing the sixth graders to U32, having three schools or having two schools. There, it really made a, it, it, there's been a very thorough approach of how to, to look at the, at, at, the, at, the, at the options. And I don't want to discuss the options at this point, but if anyone wanted to add anything to it from. <laughs> Well, one, one thing I might add, just sort of in, in light of our discussion of the budget, I think we might want to put enough meat on the bones, mm -hmm. either if it's now or if it's in our public messaging around the budget, to be able to show that this is, that we have some really concrete things we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. you know, so that when, as we talk about, oh, it's, you know, yes, the costs are increasing a lot this year, but we have a plan to deal with it. That people can start to see, you know, can see a little bit more of what the plan is coming. Or, together, even if it's not, even if we don't know specifically what what it is that, to say that there are some real pro, real proposals, real thoughts. Is it helpful? I mean, it just occurs to me that you have your annual meeting, which is typically your budget presentation, mm. and I wonder about presenting some uh, the, the logical things, because I'm, I'm also acknowledging that the full board hasn't seen the whole presentation, yeah. so I wouldn't suggest trying to do that. But some things that that the community that would be helpful for the community to know, so they know you are moving that forward, would be: here's what we've done so far. Here's our timeline. Here are the the core priorities we identified that we want for our students. Here are um, anyway. So not the full presentation that the finance committee. But I wonder if we put some of those context building pieces into our. Um, annual meeting. That's an opportunity I, I, to start I, I the think, conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree I, with that. I think so. Yeah. And include yeah. that in our messaging. And include yes. that in yes. our messaging. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Really good. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I think just just to add on that, I think two things that I haven't heard anyone else say in their summation of this. One is like. There, there are evidently cost savings, but we haven't quantified them. I think that's important to say. And I think also these are really operationally feasible configuration models that, that we're exploring and that also meet, meet 
the go our, our priorities that we set. And I know people have said that before, but I think those are things worth emphasizing in this messaging. It, it, and to say that there are, you know, there are also some real quality gains as well. Mm -hmm. That it's mm -hmm. not, you know, that I, I think in the budget context we need to be realistic about the fact we're thinking serious about budget, but also to be able to say that it's also that there are also some real quality gains to be had mm -hmm. here. Yeah, because you're right. You know, while we're thinking about future planning as you know, as a, a part of it will be a cost savings that hasn't that wasn't part of the presentation. The presentation wasn't really okay. We can mark off this much from our budget based on that. It was more so what is the quality that we can provide our students um, by making some of these different configurations. Um, yeah. I think that word, and I don't know how to say this word properly, and I was struggling even writing it down, but you know, like how they started with the core beliefs, mm -hmm. the three pillars, and that oper oh, operationalize. How okay. we operationalize that. How we operate mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm also good so much simpler. <laughs> yeah. For you. <laughs> they were looking well, at sustainability so. too. Not yes. just yeah. Yeah. what's going to work right now, yeah. but how do we make a sustainable system? Yes. Okay. And I also, sorry, I also just want to make it clear, I know we're not doing the big presentation until April, but like the meetings we've had have been open yeah. meetings. And so, so, so mm -hmm. there's, you know, we can share what we've been talking we... about is, is available to the public. Yes. I know, I don't want and it will be on the website. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. They're not there at the moment because we wanted you all to see it first, right. but yes, they will be. Active. And that there's space still for discussion and conversation right. around it, but right. that there are concrete ideas to begin with. Okay, so now we can move into personnel. Okay, don't all jump as the sack is ready or is it ready? Okay. I move that we approve the resignations of James Hitt, Hazeltine, 5th and 6th grade classroom at EMS, Uriah Proctor, Mattingly, wide support, Student support from Palace, Daisy Scarzello, classroom teacher at U32, and Kim McKellar, work based learning coordinator. And that's next year? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Second. Okay, so moved by Ursula, second by Daniel. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Can you oppose? Any abstentions? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing none, the motion carries, and thank you everybody for your service mm -hmm. to our children in our school. And I move that we accept the long term substitution for the 23 24 school year of Bernadette Bernie Skaraki, Interventionist Special Education at East Montgomery. Thank you. We're going to have a second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Okay. The next part is the uh, oh, superintendent search update. I, there, in the packet, it included the list of uh, the, the steering committee who's sitting here at the table. We. You know, we did our best to make sure that it represented the towns, that it represented teachers, that it represented different, it, that, that it was fair across our communities and across our staff uh, and across our students. We still have room for one more student. I don't know what it is. that she went. She was trying to get us. Okay. But, and we're going to get a break in a minute. But <laughs> we are still have an opening for one more student in case one of you want to volunteer. Just kidding. But at least send somebody uh, we have we have had just our first uh, just the, our first uh, meeting, and that's where we are. We are on schedule. And so any questions? Yes. I was just going to ask: Is it March 29th? Was that the day? March 27th. 27th, and, and would it would it be after after the work day that we would likely have uh, our opportunity? Interview yeah, so it would depend on how many finalists we have because we would have to walk it back, right? So if it's one finalist, for sure, it would just be if we have to do two, mm -hmm. then we would want to have, uh, we would have uh, uh, 
The place doing here is very distracting. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, so yes, we would. That would be. We would do it similarly to like we did it the last time, right? If we had, if we had two, we, I, you know, they would be spending the day. It's everything happens that uh, Michael's is the, what is the Gonkin day? The Gonkin. 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 And uh, so that that day they would be spending all day visiting our schools, and then they have an opportunity to have a forum with our communities, with remote and in person, meet their, with the staff, and then they would be interviewing with uh, with us. So we will do our best to. The reason that we picked March is because March we had just that one meeting for the board, and also because we need to. We we've, sure. we're doing it as quick as possible and uh, staying on. I didn't include the timeline uh, there, but we are staying on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So now, uh, consent agenda. Approve the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes from February seventh, twenty twenty four. I have a second. Second. Sorry. Second. All those in favor? Oh, any edits or? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any Thank extensions? You again, Thank you. Thank you. And then somebody has the folder of the. I got them. Okay, go, Daniel. I move that the board authorize board orders. In the amount of six hundred and fifty-four thousand six hundred and fifty-one dollars and ten cents. Was that both of them? Was that it's both? The total. Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. So moved by Daniel, second by Diane. Any questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> so I thought that we would have a well. We can look at our work plan first. And then we'll have a little break, just to use the bathroom, get some food, and then we'll move into executive session. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. So your next meeting is your barring of past budget. Your next meeting is the reorganization meeting on March 13th, and it's here. Um, and it will probably, if anything, have an update about the strategic plan, not a presentation the way that it's stated, just because they're still finalizing. Any questions? Good. All right. Can I just? Yes, Daniel. Uh, there are actually three places for signature. Oh, oh. oh. the very oh. 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 Sorry, I messed up. Now can system <laughs> That was my fault. Oh, no. I'm totally relying on those now. Yeah, I know. I know that was me. Yeah. That's my fault. I didn't have posted. I didn't have posted. Oh. So sorry. Okay, let's have a five minute, uh, ten minute break. Can okay. just have one minute because yeah. I'm. Uh, trying to outline this message. It's yes, going to be yes, a very important yes. message. Yeah. So I don't want to wordsmith it, but just try to get a sense. Um, so board decided to maintain our proposed budget for vote on time meeting. Uh, you can use the ballot that was mailed to you. Mm -hmm. Here are the reasons. I want to circle back to that. Mm -hmm. um, here's what we are doing, um, and that's we have a committee that's looking at reconfiguration. What you can do, so it, it, I think the annual meeting is a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. So please, please. Learn about the budget in these ways and join us on March 4th. We'll be talking about the budget and the early stages of possible reconfiguration, and we urge you to support this year's budget. Is that a hybrid meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the reasons, of all the reasons that we were taking this action, the, the two that rose to the top for me are that given the most recent estimates of tax impact, what we're pro proposing is not significantly different from what we approved back in January. And given that ballots have already been mailed, we want to avoid the confusion of canceling a vote and rewarding. Yeah. Does the, mm -hmm. those are the two yes. that we should emphasize? Yes. 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 Thank, Thank you, you Carl. Okay. With that, let's take a eight minute break and then <laughs> move into <laughs> the second session. That's fine. Seven forty. Seven. seven. You're just coming seven. back to go into executive session. We're and just coming back to go into executive session. Do you want Can to? Can we go into executive session and then take a break so that they can all leave? Yeah. That's what okay. I wondered. Yeah. So let's make a motion. Could I have a motion to move into executive session for performance no. evaluation? Is it so move? But will there be any business that we'll do though when we come out? Because I don't believe you so. Okay. All right. So then they can. Yeah. 
So I move. Thank to you. include Diane. Oh, to include. To include Megan. Megan Who said to you? Oh, second, sure. <laughs> so, so you get that, Lisa? Thank you, Yes, you Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And, and you're both. The motion carries. So we're in executive session. We'll